And the first thing we want to do is just be able to play two notes with one wrist motion, right? Two notes with our right hand with one wrist motion, two notes with our left hand. And one of the ways I like to do that is just let the stick kind of fall to the drum head. And see that it naturally wants to bounce, right? There's no finger involved there at all. Right? And as soon as you add a little bit of even just the pointer finger, the tip of the pointer finger, you can get. Which obviously is not a double stroke roll. But when you learn how to control that bounce, you can, uh, depending on how much pressure you apply with the, your first finger and your other fingers, you can get. Now, two things to notice about as I'm doing this is I'm not starting from way up here. I'm starting from kind of a medium height. A medium to low medium height, right? So that I can get two bounces. Or a bounce, right? Two notes. Now try it with your left hand. I see you doing it. Try it with your left hand. Good. Try not to reach back so much a little bit. Like, make sure you're not playing too high so that the two notes can have the same volume. Later on, as you get better at this, you'll be able to up the volume. Okay? Okay, so this is our first, first thing. Now, the very first doubles exercise that I ever learned, and I've heard it played forever and ever after that, is the Mortal Kombat thing, right? Or if you want to think the fill from the song The Distance that we've been working on, right? It's cool. Okay, so, but it's that rhythm, right? So whatever helps you remember the rhythm, because we've got the rhythm written there, which looks scary if you're not, like, super confident in reading rhythms. That, I, that looks intimidating, but it's, it's not bad, right? It's one E, a two, and a E, and four, and, okay? But we're just going to play that one time with your right hand and go back and forth with your right and left hand. One, two, three, four. Bonus points if you can figure out the bass drum part, right? But I'm not concerned about that exactly right now, mostly about the double, okay? What's powerful about that and why we practice that rhythm is because it, you only get one sixteenth note worth of rest, right? So you have to stay on it. So it really trains that, that twitch really strong. Another way you could do that is by playing like a shuffle type of rhythm. I think we might have done that in the past, but you can put on a song that has a, sh a strong shuffle pattern. The one that I like to use is uh, Leroy Brown. So you can pull up Leroy ba Brown by Jim Croce, and you can just shuffle along with it. You can go. <laughs> and just shuffle the whole song, right? It, shuffle pattern, right? That's skipping. Let's try it on the ride. Go for it. And the cool thing about this is it's a one, a two, a three, a four. The second note is on the downbeat. So it forces us a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two. But smile. There you go. It makes it better. You, you got better at it immediately when you smiled, right? One, two, ready, and right. So doing that through a song, it's going to burn if you're not used to that, right? But two things. The controlled bounce, you're not twitching, it's not t -ch 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 -ch. it's it's one wrist motion, wrist, 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 with a controlled bounce. Okay, so that's the first sort of exercise thing to do. Like you've got the Mortal Kombat where you change hands and give yourself a little bit more of a wrist, and then there's like the more of the marathon of playing that short sort of shuffle double pattern. Okay, now we're gonna go to actually applying that doubles motion into a roll. Okay, so here's, here's what we do. We're going to take a check pattern like, again, we're at 105 beats per minute, which is good, right? And we're going to go, our check pattern is just going to be easy, right? Yeah? And then the 
first part of the exercise is going to be playing doubles on the right hand, and it should sound like one e n, two e n, three e n, like this. Check. Go. Do it again. One e n, two, three, four. Check. Again. One e two, three, four. Check. Nice. One more time. Stay with the check right here. Okay. So now. The next thing we're going to do is play those doubles with the left hand, right? So they're on the ands. And a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, two, try it, and one. And a two, and a three, and a four, and a left hand doubles, right? One, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one. You can bring down your sick height a little bit. One, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one. You notice I'm not playing super high. My sticks are probably coming like eight inches off the drum, max. Now what we do is we start to go back and forth, like this. We play four counts: two, three, four. Then pattern A. Check. Pattern B. And two, and three, and four, and check. Pattern A. Check. Pattern D. Bonus points. A. B. Check. Two, three, four. A. B. Check. Two, three, four. B. Check. Two, three, four. A. Check. Two, three, four. B. Now. What brings it all together is pattern C, right? Right, left, 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 right, and stop. Right. So eventually, you want to cycle through check A, check B, check C, and just kind of go through that. Right, and which we'll do here in just a second. But I wanted to make a point about the check pattern. The other exercises we have didn't have a check pattern, but a check pattern is the thing that we're trying to do. In this case, a double stroke roll will build off of the check pattern. The check pattern will always be there, right? In this case, our check pattern is right, left, right, left, right, left. So even when we played pattern A, the right hand is still there. We've just embellished it, or we've It decorated it with a double, right? In pattern B, we've embellished or decorated it with a double on the left hand. In pattern C, we've taken the same right, left, right, left, and they all have doubles, like you're doing right there. Yeah. So, and the the thing about it is, you want to try to be as relaxed as possible. But I would play through these in the cycle that we talked about, right? Like start with either the Mortal Kombat exercise or the shuffle double and play those a little bit. And it, you have to play them for a long time. Like I, right here, as I've been explaining it to you, I've gone through it very quickly, right? But seriously, at home, you put on a song like Leroy Brown or um, The Doors' uh, Roadhouse Blues. And you sit there and you play cha, 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 the whole song. And if you don't stop playing, If you have to, you just go to quarter notes, right? And then go back to playing doubles. Because part of what is the playing for a long time is going to teach you, it's going to teach you how to move. Because fatigue is going to cause you to find, you're going to force you to want to be more efficient, right? And that is that wanting to be more efficient, as long as you're following the cues that we talked about, like go back to eight on a hand. What were the cues that we talked about with the thumb and pointer finger, right? And what parts of your hands we like we did that whole survey of your grip right so you could feel and compare and that was going really well so you want to kind of the more you repeat the, that information the more it becomes second nature the less you have to think about it in the moment okay but that's why practicing technique is important um and just getting the motion right so um questions on that no you're good You got it? Okay, cool. That's 
some basic double stroke primer. We were playing it at 105. You can go slower if you need to, okay?